I'd like to call the 20th meeting of the 2014-2015 Common Council to order. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. Progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. Thank you very much. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Uh, there are 15 present. Alderman Thiel is excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. There are no resignations, nor council appointments, or confirmation of council appointments. The next item we'll go on to is the public forum. Uh, yes, we have one this evening. Milt Storm. Mill, can I have your home address, please? Yes, yeah, so it's 1736 Marvin Court. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I want to thank the mayor and the council members to allow me my freedom of speech at these public forums. Last Friday morning, as I retrieved my Sheboygan press that, that sometimes I find underneath my bushes, on the front page I noticed a photo of a handsome gentleman. Upon further exp or examination, I saw that it was our mayor. The headline was Recycling of Usable uh, Garbage Material. And it would save the cost for the collection of the city. My advice to the mayor is good luck. Some Americans are more wasteful when it comes to what goes or is put into garbage bags. I may put out one bag of garbage a week, or I skip a week, and then I put out two garbage bags. Hopefully that will at least save the cost and labor and collection of garbage. Why then must I, as a senior, pay $5 a month, while other residents may put out many bags of garbage that may contain usable or recyclable material? President John F. Kennedy, at his first and only uh, inaugural address, in 1961 made this statement. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And we could substitute the word city for that. Maybe if more residents recycled, what could, we could reduce the cost of garbage collection. And by some stroke of genius, we maybe could get Sheboygan to be the number one city it was many years ago when I first came here. Recycling is not only an economic issue, it is a moral issue. We can all do a better job of recycling if someone or the city who gave us an adequate recycling center. Thank you for listening to my words of wisdom, free speech, and common sense. Thank you, Mel. That's it for this evening. Next are the mayor's announcements. I'd like to start out and remind the citizens that the Sheboygan Police Department is holding a, poli a police citizens academy. This is coming up starting on March 12th through May 21st. The classes will be once a week on Thursdays from 6 o'clock, excuse me, 6.30 to 9.30. Applicants will be accepted until Friday the 27th. And citizens who are 18 years of age or older can apply to uh, become a part of the citizens academy. It's a, a course that's designed to educate the public on police hiring, training, and the procedures. The academy is a uh, criminal justice system to give the citizens a better understanding of the role of a police officer. So if anyone's interested, they can, uh, can follow through with that. Tomorrow is uh, a meeting of the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet. They'll be coming up at the Rococo Room at the uh, Mead Public Library tomorrow at 6.30 if anyone's interested in that. Next, I have um, 
several recognitions to uh, to give out for some of the people who have worked for Sheboygan uh, for for a very long time. I'd like to uh, start out with Linda Schrader, Deputy City Clerk. Linda, would you please step forward? Linda was hired as a clerk typist in the city clerk's office in 2000. After interviewing several candidates for the pre, uh, position, the previous clerk, Pat Losey, had decided to hire Linda. The clerk's office staff asked about her qualifications, and Pat responded, she bakes. This is provided <laughs> to be a very, very, very true, as so many city hall uh, uh, personnel can attest to that fact. And so Linda started a long and adventurous career serving the public, showing and caring concern for all that she encountered. Linda served as a deputy clerk from 2004 to the present. Linda knew everyone. Not a day went by in the 14 and a half years that she wouldn't encounter someone at the counter or on the phone that she knew. A neighbor, a friend, a poll worker, a church member, bowlers, and the list goes on. Linda would never let a birthday go by for any one of the office staff without decorating perhaps a full vase of full fresh flowers or a card or a small gift to let them know how much she cared. All the employees in and around City Hall knew that if they were having a 3 p.m. craving for something sweet, they could always stop in the clerk's office and count on Linda to have a supply of the best chocolates, Smarties, suckers, or hard candies on her desk for them. Butterfingers were the treat of choice for a certain building inspector. <laughs> Linda made everyone feel welcome when they came to the counter, whether employees from other departments or the public. She truly loved working in the city clerk's office and found it a great joy in going the extra mile for people every single day. She certainly earned the right uh, to turn her caring nature, to nurture herself, and to enjoy a very happy and healthy next chapter of her life. Linda, on behalf of the city of Sheboygan, I'd like to present this certificate of appreciation in recognition of your 14 years of dedicated service from June of 2000 through January of 2015. Congratulations and have a great retirement. <laughs> Thank you all very much. This was a wonderful journey, and I'm going to cry. But I've thoroughly enjoyed the 14 and a half years that I've worked here. I've made wonderful friends, wonderful companions. We've had some wonderful times, always some hard times too, but 99% of them were the best of times. And I thank you all. I'll be thinking of you when I don't have to get up so early in the morning anymore. <laughs> Next, I'd at like to ask Fire Department Lieutenant Jeffrey Wessel to please come forward. Jeff is a 22-year veteran of the Sheboygan Fire Department, being hired in January of 1993. His most recent position was Lieutenant of Station No. 5, A-Shift. Jeff spent the majority of his career at Station No. 2, spending time as a firefighter and later a fire equipment operator of Ladder No. 2. He was promoted to lieutenant on January 1st of 2012. Prior to being hired by the Sheboygan Fire Department, Jeff spent eight years on the West Milwaukee Fire Department and two years with the Milwaukee Fire Department. Jeff stepped forward to help organize the live burn our, um, our department had had this fall. His first live burn in the city had had, had in over for 25 years. Jeff was involved in the number of water rescues over the years with recognition coming from the rescue of an elderly lady, lady from the apartments at Oak Creek in 1998. Unable to open the door to the apartment due to water pressure against the door, he was part of a team that used an ax to chop through the wall, rescue the lady from the apartment. He was also on the scene of the landmark fire and the fire at Bethlehem School. Jeff lives in Sheboygan with his wife Rose. Jeff, we have a certificate of appreciation uh, for the 21 years of dedicated service to the city of Sheboygan, working from January of 1993 through December of 2014. Congratulations and happy retirement, Jeff. Mayor. Is Randall Bauer here? 
is Thomas Sontag here? Okay, our next uh, honoree um, is Bob Vreeke. Bob started with the Department of Public Works in September of 1980 as a laborer one. On October 12th of 1980, he was promoted to sanitation operator. In 1983, he was promoted to truck driver, and in 2004, promoted to equipment operator. Paula, his wife is here. Paula, will you please come forward? The guys that work knew that if you really wanted to brighten Bob's day, there were two things that brought a smile to his face, talking about his family and his many hunting endeavors. He liked to talk about the weekend activities with his grandchildren, such as watching their sporting events or just hanging out with them. When it came to hunting, there was always a trip planned and a story to tell, not to mention how awesome all those critters tasted. To me, it was clear that Bob really enjoyed coming to work every day and did his best to provide quality service for our city. Bob was a longtime excellent employee who was fighting cancer. Bob will be missed by the entire city team, but most of all by those co-workers in his department at DPW. Bob fought the great fight and was making progress in recovering from a recent operation. He was looking forward to returning his position at the city and uh, recently had the chance to join his family and friends for a deer hunting excursion last year. But unfortunately, his condition deteriorated and his fight came to an end on December 4th. In recognition of the 34 years of service, I'd like to present Paula with this certificate of appreciation honoring Bob Vreeke for his 34 years of dedicated service from September of 1980 to December of 2014. Paula, you're very welcome. Next, we'll go on to our hearing. Item 2.1 is a hearing for the final resolution regarding the Industrial Development Revenue Bond Financing for Polyfab Corporation project. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close. Did you want to speak, sir? Yeah. Please step up to the podium. <coughs> Sir, can I I'm Rick Gill from Polyfab. Can I have your name, please? Rick Gill, G I L L. Okay, very good. Thank you. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank um, you folks and the city and the state for helping us to do this project because it is something that is we could not have done by ourselves. And uh, it's a big step for us, and we're just really uh, thankful for your help. Thank you very much. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. <coughs> Is there any objection to closing? All those in favor of closing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda, which is items 3.2 through 3.22. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file our, all ROs, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would ask that uh, uh, 3.5 be uh, pulled for a separate vote. Thank you. Uh, we'll take 3.5 first. Is there any discussion on 3.5, which is community block grant uh, proposal? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on 3.5 in the consent agenda. Twelve eyes and three abstentions. 
Okay, then we'll go on and take all the remaining items in the consent agenda. Is there any discussion on those items? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Nice. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items uh, 4.1 through 4.7 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Daniel Gilbertson et al. versus the city of Sheboygan and authorizing payment for said services. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Items five point through through five point seven will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item six point one is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred pursuant to RO number one ninety three of fourteen fifteen submitting license applications, and they recommend that the taxicab driver's license zero six two one be denied based on her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her taxicab driver's license application or record of violations related to the license activity and her record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Mandy Kuntzman here this evening? She is not. Um, she did appear before our committee and we voted three to one to deny the license. Um, because of her long record as well as the police department's negative recommendation. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes and one no. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by salary and grievances who has re referred RC number 215 of 1415 by the Committee of the Whole and RO number 178 of 1415 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Alderman Bourne regarding revising the Chief Administrator's job description and recommends the attached ordinance with updated job description be passed. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move that the... Um uh, report be uh, accepted and adopted and pass the ordinance with an updated job description. Is there a second? second? Thank you for that motion and support. Motions before us for discussion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not going to be supporting this document in its present form, although I do have an amendment for it in a moment. I have no problem with essentially items after number two. Um, but the part I do have a concern with is, and uh, some of it, of course, is semantics and subject to interpretation, but the part I do have a problem with is asking the chief administrative officer to make um, policy decisions um, on behalf of the council. That's not that individual's role, um, nor should it be that individual's role. That's why we're here. Um, so um, I have no problem with having the chief administrative officer present a detailed uh, budget. Um, based off of the information that we know, and even having that uh, particular individual put together options um, to present to the council for their selection, um, but to have the chief administrative officer decide, um, you know, which positions are going, um, which services go—that's not that position's role. That's our role. So, um, 
I would like to amend um, the document, um, essentially number one under the um, develop and present a detailed budget, uh, a balanced budget scenarios for consideration was, would be to detail, develop a, and present a, balance, or a detailed budget with optional scenarios for balancing the budget um, okay. if needed. That's a second. Okay, we have an amendment before us. Uh, for further discussion on the amendment, Alderman Boring. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> I don't know if this is on the amendment. Uh, I'll just mention what I'm going to mention, and if it's not, I'll, I'll talk about it later. Uh, I don't think, uh, in my opinion, I don't think having the chief administrative officer uh, pre uh, develop and present detailed budget scenarios for consideration by the council with input from the mayor, uh, I don't understand why that's making policy. Uh, we're, the ones, we're the ones that are eventually gonna make the policy by voting on some of the scenarios that's presented by the chief administrative officer. Uh, for example, I believe the school board this year, and they've had some very, very difficult budgets the last couple of years, uh, the school board was, by the financial people that work for the school system, was presented uh, a balanced budget with a number of options for the school board to uh, consider. I also believe that by the time the county budget arrived for the county board supervisors to look over, the financial people and the finance committee over at the, uh, at the county came up with a number of scenarios uh, to balance the budget. Now with the school system, uh, and, and with the county, uh, those weren't necessarily the final product, but they were suggestions by those bodies to help those bodies balance their budget. So I don't think by the chief administrative officer coming up with scenarios and numbers attached to those scenarios are, are creating policy. When it comes time to vote on the budget, we're creating the policy. Thanks. Thank you for those comments. Next, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I I just echo some of um, Alderman Hammond's comments. Is I, I I too also don't think that the uh, chief administrator should be setting policy policy decisions. Um, that may be what the school does, but however, we're not the school district. Um, we are the elected officials that are charged with um, balancing our budget every year. Uh, the chief administrator. I mean, as you all know, it's not an elected position. It is appointed. He is a policy enforcer, not a policy setter. I believe he should just give the budget as it is, and once again, he can give us some options, but we're the ones that ultimately have to make the decision. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be coming from his office. Um, so I will support, support this amendment. If this amendment doesn't pass, I will not support the uh, document as a whole. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Next, Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> we had a long discussion about the, uh, about the uh, actually, which are relatively minor changes to the Chief Administrative Officer's job position as salary and grievance. Um, I can certainly support Alderman Hammond's amendment, uh, and I will, um, but, but here's the thing that we, I think, all need to remember. If, in fact, the Chief Administrative Officer presents us, as this would indicate with various budget scenarios that would be balanced, there would be policy decisions within that budget because a, bu a budget of, is, if nothing else, a great big policy uh, statement. Um, so one of the balanced budget scenarios might be to eliminate four police officers. It could be to close a fire station. It could be to close the library three days a week. It could be to stop maintaining our city parks. It, you know, there are any number of policy uh, decisions that you find within a, a budget. And so what we're asking here is for the chief administrative officer to present us with some options. But from my perspective, the challenge is before we ask um, the chief administrative officer to, to make those, to make those balanced budget uh, proposals to us, we give him or her, as it may develop in the future, a roadmap uh, to tell him which road we're going down because uh, it's not really fair in my view to have the chief administrative officer come in with 16 different scenarios and then get shot up for it as it were because one is uh, angry about the police, one is angry about the library, one about public works and so forth. So again, we really are in charge here of, of presenting, um, of thinking through 
it, you know, it's that, that long-term vision. What do we want to see our city be? What do we want it to look like? How do we want it to operate? And those are decisions and input that need to come from us. So in terms of the balanced budget scenarios, I mean, really, that's almost an administrative task. You know, we'll, we'll take 100,000 here and we'll put 50,000 here and we'll take 2 million here and, and, and rearrange it and we can budget and balance anything that we want. But it is up to us, it is incumbent on, on us as, uh, as, as alder people to make sure that we present the chief administrative officer and other department heads with ideas about where it is that we want the city to go. This is going to be particularly important because as far as I can tell, the next two to three years are going to be incredibly difficult from a budget perspective for this city and for all municipalities within the state. So nothing in this job description gives the chief administrative officer policy power that he or she doesn't already have or shouldn't have. It's really to clarify that we'd like some, you know, we'd like some, you know, scenarios. That being said, I think I think Alderman Hammond's uh, uh, amendment is certainly within the philosophy that was expressed at salary and grievance, and I'm perfectly um, uh, uh, happy to support it. Thank you for those comments, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm not going to support this the way it stands right now either, and um, for, for various reasons. Uh, number one, I. I don't think that there's a problem, so we're trying to fix something that, that isn't broken, in my opinion. Um, it appears to me in, in my dealings, um, you know, on the council with the various committees and uh, the department heads that I work with, that the mayor and the, um, the chief administrative officer work fine in, together, and there is no need to, you know, to further, you know, tweak the job description. It seems to me that ever since that we've come up with the chief administrative officer. Um, there's been issues, whether it's related directly with his position or the mayor's position or the delineation of duties amongst those two offices. <clears throat> and I think the real problem is, is that uh, we've got a hybrid form of government here. We've got a uh, council mayor system with a hybrid of a chief administrative officer or a manager in place. And so we've got most municipalities either have a commission, they have a um, council manager, or they have a mayor council system. And we've got kind of a hybrid, unique form of government here. And I think what needs to happen is we need to figure out which way we want to go. Do we want to have a mayor council? Do we want to have a commission? Or do we want to have a council city manager system? And when the new council gets seated, I will be putting something forward that we will look at the different scenarios, the benefits, and um, you know the uh, you know we'll, we'll look at uh, you know which way we want to go with that. But I don't think tweaking this continually um, is is you know really solving the issue. I think we really need to look at how are we best going to be served as a city moving forward, and I, I think that's what needs to be addressed, and that's what. Uh, I'm going to do. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, to Mr. Born, or Alderman Person Bourne's comments earlier, it's exactly what I'm saying. Um, I just want the language to be a little more clarified. When you look at what the school district does and other municipalities do, their business managers, the council, in their case, the school board provides them with input. They present the budget and then go back and look at various options for balancing that budget. I just want that more clearly delineated in the job description that we're expecting them to present a detailed budget with options on how to handle any deficits um, that may exist. Um, so I think uh, actually we're saying the exact same thing. I just want it more clarified in this document um, that we're not expecting them to come out and say this is what we're doing. We want options and this body will decide on what options makes the most sense based off of um, and where the city is at that time. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just don't think uh, unless we get uh, the chief administrative officer develops and presents a detailed balanced budget scenarios, uh, what, I got, what I got at the committee of the whole meeting that we had <coughs> on the budget, what I got out of uh, Mr. Amodio's office, Nancy Bus could have provided me with that. Uh, 
this, as, this as simple as that. And unless, unless the, in my opinion, unless the chief administrative officer is more involved in the budget as I'm describing, I simply don't think it's a salary grade 16 job. I really don't. I don't think we're getting our money for the position. I talked to a financial person uh, earlier this week that in, in the community that I, that I respect very much, and this topic was brought up, and pardon my French, he said, why the hell did you hire him if he's not going to give you a balanced budget with scenarios? And I guess that's my question. Why are we paying somebody $120,000 when we could get the same information from Nancy Buss, who's been with the city for a million years? She, I could have gotten the same information that I got at the committee of the whole meeting uh, from Jim that I, that, I, that I got from Nancy Buss. So uh, I'm sticking to my guns. I, I won't support the amendment. I think what I laid out is a very good compromise. It's clear as glass of what we expect from that position. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I believe uh, this document at committee was voted unanimously, and I was just wondering if there's a possibility that we could forego the amendment and take this document and send it back to salary agreements and have them come to the Common Council with a, a clean document rather than try to amend something on the fly. Did you want to make a motion? I'll make that this? motion. Is there a second to that motion? Second. There's a motion and a second to uh, send this back to the Salary and Grievances Committee for further discussion. Uh, under discussion, Alderman Donahue. Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about what our job is. So Salary and Grievance got some suggestions to change the Chief Administrative Officer's job description. They're pretty minor changes. Since we're focused only on Alderman Hammond's amendment, I'm not going to talk about those other changes. But we voted on it. We can send it back to committee, and we can do the same thing, and then we can bring it back here, and then there'll be another amendment, and we can do... This is what we're paid for. The committee made a recommendation. We have an amendment, and I think we can decide. The amendment, as far as I'm concerned, and I don't mean to disrespect... Alderman Hammond's um, uh, authorship here, but it's relatively minor. Uh, it's, it's not a huge sea change. It's not anything that dramatically changes what Salary and Grievance came up with, or in fact what Alderman Bourne had originally proposed. Um, as always, we need to be respectful uh, of in, in terms of our conversation here, but I, I, really do <laughs> I really do hope that we can vote on the amendment, and then I would be happy to just very briefly review the additional uh, job changes that were made. A few of the things that you saw in your document were just cleaning up. You know, there were a few grammatical and categorical errors, so, but I'd be happy to just review the substantive changes once we get through the amendment. Uh, and then the motion to refer... At, and then depending on what happens with that, to the amendment and then to the job description. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Carlson, did you have something on this uh, motion to re-refer? Yes. Go ahead. And, and, and I will follow up on when we get back to the amendment, hopefully. Very good. Um, I think this has already run its course. It went through the proper process, as Alderman Donny has already stated. And now we do have the chance as a whole body to talk about it. To send it back to the committee is once again shirking the responsibilities as this entire council. I, there's no need to send it back to committee. It's a very minor change between his wording and his wording. And I, I think we can settle that right here, right now. That's what we're here for. There's no reason to send it back through, wait another week to have it go to committee, then wait another week to have it come back to the council so we can have the same exact argument. It's, it's pointless in my opinion. So hopefully we can vote this down and talk on the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on re-referral? Can I just find out who made the second to refer? Thank you. Would the clerk then please uh, give us the voice vote? Okay. We're we're voting voting. Pardon? Sending it back. Sending it back to we're committee. We're, back we're to voting committee. to send it back to SMG. Um, please write the clerk call the roll for the uh, motion to re-refer. Yep. I'm sorry. Yours didn't go in yet. I'm 
<laughs> I'm guessing, but I don't want to do it. On, and I'm also <laughs> sorry, Kevin. I don't have yours or David. I was on the document. Okay, there it is. <coughs> Four eyes, 11 noes. Okay, we continue with the discussion on the amendment. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. As I stated before, the change is pretty minor. But in my opinion, I, I think we need to keep, keep it the way it is right now for two reasons. One, um, the chief administrator has been offering up suggestions for the past couple of years every time we, we have this budget fight. This council chooses not to accept any of them, hence the reason why we still have a garbage fee. And the way I see it is, is if the chief administrator pr proposes a balanced budget with those cuts, with whatever cuts that need to happen, this body most likely will vote on it and then place all blame on the city administrator and therefore he becomes a policy setter so this body can shirk its responsibilities. That's why I don't see it as minor as it, as it really does come across, just a matter of wording, but that's, an, that's one reason why I cannot support it. His sole job is to enforce the policy, present the budget as it stands in real life. We can have that fight here as a council. That should not be his decision because that's the way I see it happening. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Alderman Hammond, I'd like to ask you to please re-reread <laughs> the amendment. Um, hold on for a minute, and sir. And save it. And save it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, you're certain, uh, this is recorded, I hope, so hopefully we won't have to do this one more time. Um, I would like to, my amendment would be to develop and present a balanced, uh, a balanced budget with optional um, scenarios. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, develop and present a detailed budget, thank you, Alderman Carlson, with, optionals, with optional scenarios for, con uh, with optional scenarios to balance any deficits um, consideration to the Common Council. Um, did you want to, there, there's a the rest of that sentence and another sentence? Yep, that's all stays. Okay. I just want to add that piece, yes. With, okay. With think. Um, develop and implement annual budget under direction Common Council with input from there, all that stays. Okay. All right. Um, seeing no other discussion, will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment? Ten eyes, five noes. Uh, the, the amendment passes. The um, main motion is before us as amended. Is there any uh, further discussion on the motion before us? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on passage? Twelve eyes, three noes. Motion passes. Item six point three is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number one twenty nine of fourteen fifteen by Alderman Hammond being a final resolution regarding the industrial revenue bond financing for Polyfab Corporation project and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the RC and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion. Support under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Mr. Gill and Polyfab for um, some investment that they're going to make in the community. Anytime we get our manufacturers um, and business community to continue to make investment in Sheboygan, that can only be a positive thing. So uh, again, we'd like to thank Mr. Gill and Polyfab for uh, their investment. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eyes. 
Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 130 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish revenue and appropriation proceeds from the estate of Carol Bootson and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the RC and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? See none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.5 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 124 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond authorizing accepting an offer to purchase the armory building and a portion of the armory parcel. Recommends that the resolution 124 of 1415 be placed on file and as a result of the determination by the historic preservation and housing rehab commission, the committee recommends that the staff draft and execute a counter offer to seize factoring in the necessary changes as a result of the 90-day delay in demolition. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. <laughs> Under discussion. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, what exactly are we voting on here then? This is going to be another. Uh, can somebody explain what this means exactly? Or not only me, but maybe the public so they know what's going on. City Attorney. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the Historic Preservation Housing Rehabilita Rehabilitation Commission at its last meeting uh, made a finding that the armory uh, was a preferably preserved historic uh, significant building and that thereby places a 90-day hold on the demolition permit that would have issued uh, consistent with the offer to purchase by C's, which called for uh, the payment uh, to have been in the price of the demolition. C's was going to do the demolition. Uh, with that offer uh, had a uh, acceptance date January 6th, so that's expired basically now. Uh, this proposal is to then submit a counter offer to seize to uh, further the process uh, with the understanding though that there's going to be a delay in at least 90 days before there's any demolition or going forward with the uh, with the purchase but it's I believe uh, and I uh, won't speak for the committee itself but uh, I believe my understanding is it's an indication to seize that the city wishes to still proceed with their project subject to this delay. Uh, obviously, in that 90-day period, if there uh, is someone that comes forward with a proposal to uh, preserve the armory, uh, that's something that the commission then would look at um, and the council would look at. But uh, absent that, it would continue the process with C's and they could go forward with acquisition of the property. So this would have staff draft and execute a counter offer to see is basically consistent with their original offer uh, in light of the 90 day delay. Thank you. Hopefully that's, uh, that's clear enough. Thank you for that explanation. Is there any other discussion? See none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Twelve eyes, three no's. Motion passes. Item 6.6 .6 is an RC by finance to whom was referred a RO number 208 of 1415 and resolution 131 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond authorizing into a seven-year lease purchase agreement for the remount and refurbishing of three existing ambulance bodies onto new chassis and the purchase of one pre-owned 2008 model ambulance with 2,000 miles. Alderman Hammond. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the RCs and put the, resolu put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I originally was not going to support this, uh, this RC, uh, but after having about a 45-minute conversation last week with the fire chief, very frank and open discussion, I, I might add, where he knows where I stand and I know where he stands. And the reason I'm going to support this is for two reasons. Number one, if we're going to be in the ambulance business, I want our paramedics who are doing an excellent job. It's never been an issue with me. They do an excellent job. I want them to have the best equipment and the latest technology possible to be able to serve uh, the patients that they serve. The second reason I'm going to support this lease is because after uh, having some communication with our purchasing agent, this is a municipal lease. And the term of the lease is for seven years, but I found out in, in some communication with the purchasing agent that with the municipal lease, that in the event for financial reasons, during the course of that lease, that the city would decide no longer to be in the ambulance business, that the city at that point could stop making payments on that lease with no future penalty, and the leasing agent would accept the return of, uh, of that equipment, the ambulances and whatever else. So uh, I really have my doubts with the way that the finances of the ambulance have been going since we've been in the ambulance business, that it's going to survive another seven years. I certainly hope that's not the case, but I think some decisions are going to have to be made because what we were promised back in 08 or 09 when I was around, and I think maybe the only other one was Alderman Heidemann, was that we could expect that we were going to, going to receive 48% of the revenue. Uh, Point of order, of Mr. The Mayor, revenue. we're on the topic of the ambulance and purchasing, not rehashing whether or not the ambulance is viable financially. It's should we be purchasing these ambulances or not? Not, again, rehashing what happened in 08 or 09. Thank you for that point of order. Alderman Warren, could you please confine your comments to the ambulance purchase? Well, that's one of the reasons why uh, I, have, uh, I am, su I am su supporting it, and as I said, because of the municipal lease. And uh, uh, that in the event that hopefully... Uh, Mr. Amodio and our finance chairman will take a look at the, uh, the financials of the, of the ambulance service, such as they have been the last few years. Uh, uh, I am going to support it, but as, as always, it's not the service we're providing, it's the financials. And I think if any independent CPA or loan officer at a bank would take a look at these financials over the years, they're not in very good shape. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Thirteen ayes, two noes. Motion passes. Under ordinances, items 7.1 through 7.3 will be referred to various committees. Next item on the agenda is other matters. City Attorney. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2015 and June 30, 2016. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 8.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a claim from Jerome Doink for alleged damages to his vehicle when a Sheboygan snowplow struck his vehicle. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. Next, we have a scheduled uh, closed session. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close uh, to convene in closed session on the exemption provided in Section 19851G Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litigation in which it is involved, namely Gilbertson et al. versus City of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County Circuit Court case number 14CV792. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for closed session? <clears throat> Fifteen eyes. We'll stand adjourned for five minutes and reconvene. I'm always going back and forth, you know me.